Yes. We on? Can you one? Oh, shit. Was that a thing now? <laughs> I don't know. Should we get our... What did you... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, welcome to the Talkies. This is the Talkies. Hey, is audio rolling? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This is a episode I've been looking forward to for since, days. <laughs> since we yeah. watched the Joker. Because normally we watch the movie and then review it the same day, but we watched it over the weekend. Uh, and so now we've been kind of sitting on it and for overlapped a, while. a little bit. So like yeah, I yeah. watched it on Monday. Yeah. And you guys or Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a whole weekend going. No, we, we watched, watched it Friday, Friday night. Yeah. Friday. Yeah. yeah. So there's a whole weekend and time where we haven't been able to really. And we even spent time together. It. And I'll tell you what, it was hard not to get deep into Joker. We did talk a little bit about it. We did a little. You guys did, and and you and I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. But now it's time to unleash. Yes. So, so this was a uh, no holds bar. <laughs> uh, this is spoilers. We Full have lots spoilers. of spoilers. Full spoilers. All spoilers. Yep. Movie spoiled. Um, he becomes a Joker. The, what the? <laughs> what? <laughs> At I, the end. I actually thought that was open to interpretation. <laughs> yeah. The end, I felt like he was just... I mean, he's of, a clown vigilante I, yeah. who calls himself the, way, the Joker. The way I see it is he actually becomes Batman at the end. The thing I... Yeah. That's how I interpreted it. That's how I interpreted it. Yeah. Can we get into whether the movie was good? No. No, we can't. <laughs> we have to talk more about... I well, want to Joker go on Batman. record. I must be okay. heard. You must be polarized. I didn't like the movie. Not really. How much did you not like it? What, what percentage would you give it? I've started liking it less with distance from the film. but Like every time? Yeah. Like always happens. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like you walk away and you start thinking about a movie and you go, uh, oh. Mm. But uh, immediately after the film, I felt like I had missed something big time. Yeah. Because there were a lot of people around me that clearly liked what had just happened. And I was like, yeah. What? Like Co- context didn't for do you. Do it for me. Context for you. You you went opening night, right? Yeah, yes, it yes, was yes, it night. would have been. So there was a lot of people who were night. really interested to see it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. There was applause at the end, which I also That's felt weird. A hesitant applause. Yeah, like I, like people want there you could tell there were people who wanted to clap but didn't know if it was okay. <laughs> like yeah, I was like, is this appropriate to clap? <laughs> yeah. <back>? It's <laughs> yeah. not. <laughs> the answer is no. We shouldn't answer have clapped at that. Yeah. Uh what did you think? I I pretty much loved this movie. I pretty much really it. liked it. Yeah. I have like four or five very specific issues with the movie. Um, but overall, I loved the performance and I loved the, uh, the pacing of it. I loved where it concluded. Um, I loved how weird it made me feel at the end. It made me feel very like... Almost like uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, because you're like, oh, a triumph. Yeah. Wait, no, this isn't triumphant. Wait, it Exa- is. Exactly. Yeah. I loved that. Yeah. And I loved. Uh, triumph meets tragedy. It felt very uh, it provocative. Was, it was triumph versus meets tragedy. That's yeah. And I love the, uh, the aesthetic. I love that they didn't. I like that it was an original take on the Joker and it wasn't based on any pre-existing comics or anything yeah like that. that sounds very much up your alley yeah like, here's what's crazy though i love virtually everything you said you loved mm. but don't really like the movie what's up with that what's See, up with that that's usually where taylor and i are are at like, yeah like we like a lot of the same things but yeah. have very different ways of love the performance them. and the aesthetic especially yeah i love the way they used music with the exception of one moment that will and we'll i get, obviously yeah. get into that soon but uh uh for me there was just a lot missing here what did you think d i'm gonna give my thoughts real quick please uh did I'm, you like it i'm half and half <laughs> <laughs> i uh I enjoyed it, but also very much didn't enjoy it. The, uh, the, the, the first two acts, I felt, were like, this movie is kind of dumb. And then the third act, I was like, holy shit, this is awesome. And then when I left the theater, I'm like, ah, it doesn't justify the first two acts, though. So I'm, I'm half and half. Well, I'm two thirds and third. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's bad math. You know when you said uh, 
you uh you have five very specific issues yeah it's interesting because you talk about other movies how if they're bad movies and they're bad movies you can't like a movie and it still be bad mm, you can't like a movie and it still be bad that's what you've told you us can't sorry i always try to wrap my head around it because i have very i have an opinion that's based on a few different things yeah. that that opinion stems from trying to make people stand with how they feel about a movie more where I feel like a lot of people discredit their opinion. You're talking about because things. they want to fit in with yeah. most of us. Yeah. Where people are like, like, I know it's a dumb movie, but, but I loved it. You yeah. know, like, well, then it's a good movie is what you're saying. Yeah. It just means because I believe that film is largely subjective. Right. So if you, uh. <laughs> And so, is it though? <laughs> which is why there's no such thing as film schools. <laughs> and so, well, that's why film school is a scam. Ooh. Oh, that Ooh. is how they get you. Ooh. Oh my Wrecked. God. <laughs> Wrecked. Wrecked. Um, so, <laughs> but obviously I think, I think a film can have nuance to it. Yeah. Obviously like you can like parts of it and dislike parts of it. You know, I'm not saying you, you have to like the whole, gotcha. I'm just saying like if you're, but you can like, I mean, like everything, you can like things for different reasons. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing with this film is that I think anyone, I think this film pretty much fits in with anybody's interpretation of the Joker. Mm. Like, if you went in really hoping to like it, you're going to like it. If you went in really hoping to hate it, you're probably going to hate it because mm. it's it's just so open to several different things. They don't really have a theme going on. There's not really a direction that that the director was saying, look at this, this is my art. It's more like, this is just a piece that fits in with your specific version of what you wish this movie to be. That's what it feels uh, a lot like. Oh, okay. Yeah, I feel, I don't, th- I don't agree with that totally because I feel like saying that is saying that the director had no vision. That's, and, a, that's yeah, what I'm saying. I don't think that's true. I don't think yeah. Todd Phillips is a great director. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he's like the the greatest director ever or whatever, but I think I think he definitely had a specific had a vision, vision with he, this film. He obviously has a talent for executing good comedies. Yeah. No, I think the Hanover trilogy, I think was was an interesting thing because he did because the first movie, The Hanover, was just a very just gimmicky film. You know, hey, what happens when all these guys are blacked out? Um and then he knew like I've seen interviews where with him where he talked about the second and third movies, how they're, it's the same gimmick. And he thought it's funny to put the same gimmick and then have somehow new problems emerge from the same thing. And, and I thought that was a, that was a fresh take on comedy, even if they're not really that good of films. But I, the one thing that I've never really felt from the Hanover or from, uh, the other movie, he did a movie with, uh, RDJ and, Due date. and Zach Due date. Um, they're they're darker movies. They're movies that kind of slip into the more realistic side of, of humanity. Um, but I've never felt a strong direction. I've never ever felt like this is a Todd Phillips movie. Like I feel the same. Well, this definitely has a completely different vibe from anything else he's ever made. So it doesn't feel the same. Kind of you know, this, style there. This is a drama. It's not comedy at all. I I still don't feel like there was a strong direction though here. I feel like it was it was the direction was strictly on the character, you know, like it was a character piece, um, and which I think that's part of your issues with it because it doesn't have it. It focuses on character over plot almost exclusively yeah. to anything else, and yeah. I, and I think there's a fine balance there yeah. that's hard to accomplish. Uh, I think it's a sin of many character films uh, out there where the supporting cast largely gets kind of pushed to the side or, or even like just, just not given much thought. And I, I felt with this film, the pretty much every other character seemed unimportant. Um, it seemed pretty one dimensional and not really to matter mm. with maybe the exception of Robert De Niro's character who honestly stole the, the screen <laughs> every he time he came on. And I think it was again, because no one else played a real character to mm. me just uh, just walking Phoenix and I felt like having we didn't have to actually leave his, his perspective and go into another character's perspective but having some more fleshed out characters around him would have broadened the perspective um, of what he was going through 
And with, without that broader perspective, it came really hard to figure out exactly who he was and what he was going through. Mm. Uh, my primary example of that is the reveal that his girlfriend was a more or less a hallucination um, or a imagining one or the other. Um, uh, there's a similar reveal in A Beautiful Mind, right? But in A Beautiful Mind, we have his wife and a few other characters that show us where the line is between what's going on inside of him and what is reality, mm. which then lets us understand and, and put appropriate weight into what's happening to him. Mm -hmm. The reveal in this one more or less kind of tells us that we have no compass anymore. Anything could be real or fake because mm. we're in his, we're from his perspective the whole time. Maybe, maybe the, all these clowns all around him are part of his delusion too. Sure, you yeah. know, I, I don't know. Yeah. So it, it, it felt like, it felt like I just didn't know where to go, what to believe, what was real, what wasn't, why yeah. it mattered. Yeah. I would say when character pieces are, are good in my mind, that they're character pieces that, have a transformation of a character over a plot, you know, and I because I really like movies for plot, yeah, unlike porn, you know. <laughs> I don't watch porn for the plot, I do, you do, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I mean, if it's got a good plot, there's some great ones. I, know, I fast just, forward this, I don't so. like, I don't like porn with plots, <laughs> okay. So, the uh, <laughs> I like plots in movies, was, yeah, was yeah. the thing, yeah. and this movie, like you said, had a very had a very weak objective point of view. You know, it didn't have, uh, it didn't have a plot. It didn't have a, a specific trajectory to go. It showed you events that are happening to this guy and things that he thought about the events and his reaction. And he does have an arc. He definitely has an arc, a uh, very strong one, but it's not, it doesn't mean anything in the end. And that's what I get from movies a lot is meaning is is something that i walk away from and going wow that was a journey you know or that was something that i can fit in with or relate with or empathize with i like that stuff yeah uh, this no, that's funny because that like flies that. in the face of a a conversation we had before seeing this movie i don't know long ago we questioned the whole idea of making a joker movie because yeah. we were like do we really want to develop empathy for this character who is kind of iconic for being just non-motivated right. right he's right. he's just chaos driven he right. doesn't have a motivation that that it's, it's grounded in some kind of um psychology that makes sense right. right right and that's what makes him so scary right that's exactly what happened yeah. uh but it sounds like you're complaining that this didn't do that yeah like that's well, yeah a, right <laughs> well i'm saying if you're gonna have <laughs> like a maybe this matches who the joker becomes a, a movie so that, that doesn't make sense that's matches exactly the joker <laughs> that's exactly what i i wanted to talk about today and that's the the context that formulates your opinion on the piece as you said movies are objective right I didn't say that. that's that's the opposite of what he said art sorry subjective <laughs> <laughs> that was strange yeah as you said movies are subjective yeah uh they're all pieces of art and anyone who looks upon it has their own view their own interpretation of what happens um that being said i, I just lost my train of thought Ooh, subjective that's correct. only your opinion okay so that so that being said this i film, disagree <laughs> this film has uh i think you could explain away anything Anything that that somebody comes over and says, here's a flaw within this film that I don't like, uh, someone else could come back and say, well, that's because of this. And I feel like you could do that almost anywhere in this movie. And you can't do that all the time with a bunch of movies because there's like evidence against like what with you have you have third party perspective, you know, where you could say, well, because of uh, with the beautiful mind, because you have uh, one perspective, it makes sense that the reveal is a reveal, you know. And you don't have that with this movie. Mm. And so everything becomes interpretive. And I, I have a problem with that. Mm. I have a problem you with that. I mean, like, everyone. I could say, well, maybe, maybe his romance with the girl was actually real. Yeah. And that at the end of the movie, he was having a mental breakdown exactly. where he thought his girlfriend wasn't real. So, for example, the, right. last, the <laughs> last scene where he, he walks out of the uh, interrogation room or the talking room. Right. Um, and he has bloody footsteps. Yeah. I read that as purely symbolic. Right. I didn't. Re I didn't think he did anything actually real there because they're only on his feet. They're never. They're, I didn't see any blood anywhere else. So in my mind, 
it's representing where he, how the Joker, has, what he's become, basically. Whereas you said you interpreted it as he just killed that person who was yeah. in the room. Both, I feel like, are very fine. You can have mm. both uh, views. They're both, they're both valid, is what I mean. So as I was saying, I don't like movies that validate any argument that you can have toward it. Because to me, that like, feels ingenuine. Ingenuine? Yeah. Taylor, clap back. Clap back. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your opinion. <laughs> that it is. Yeah, that's definitely my opinion. Yeah. It's probably wrong, though. Objectively. I think you have a wrong opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah. My, my opinion is wrong. Um, I have a wrong uh, opinion. I think, I think what I real, realized about myself is um, you've been saying lately this phrase that story is king. Yeah, it's king. And for me, experience is king. Nah, experience is the joker. <laughs> the jester. <laughs> experience is king and that can that can mean maybe for some story that well maybe for some movies a story is the yeah. best way to to convey an experience. Yeah, but right. that's not always the case. That's fair. For me, I yeah. really like. Yeah. So I, I got a really great experience out of this yeah. film. Which is why you well, which is why you like Mother so much, right? Yeah. I was about to mention Mother. I was yeah. going to say, you know, going back to a movie we often bring up on this show. All the time. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'd say experience was definitely the, the higher driver of that truck yeah. Yeah. than story. Yeah. yeah. And, and which is why I got on board with and it. And it completely yeah. worked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so which but then, then, like, on the flip side, though, like... And everything you... Every qualm you just described also applies to that movie. It does, which is interesting because... And you love Mother. Yeah, well, and we've talked about this also. We've, Sounds like um, I'm a flip flop. You're a hypocrite. Some, I'm a, I'm sometimes a the best way to convey a strong experience is through a story, but, like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. But in so the qualms that you just said that I yep. that I have, yep, uh, are valid qualms with certain movies. I would say, except for the ones that tell me uh, in the beginning that it's going to be an experienced movie, right? If if I for example, I watched, uh, what was it with you guys? Eraserhead, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and going into that movie, I knew what I was going in for. Okay. And so I, I came out with, okay, I, I went in with an experience, expecting an experience, and I came out with an experience. Had I gone in thinking there's going to be a clear plot that I was going to learn from, I probably would have hated the movie entirely. Yeah, and we've talked about this before. The movie itself can be what tells you exactly. what kind of movie it's going to be. Exactly. Yeah. Mother became that pretty quickly. It did, yeah. You know, there's there's a turning point in that where you go, "Okay, I'm throwing everything out here. Right. Anything's possible." Right. Um and Joker doesn't do that. Joker does not. That's yeah. why it frustrated you. Yeah, correct. I see. Yeah. But even so, going into it emotionally, I like the idea that this is a plot movie. Yeah. I like the idea of that, and yeah. I, I, I wasn't fed that. And my, and so Which my is why answer I like to, the, the end so much. My answer to your argument is that uh, I would have loved to have loved this movie as purely an, ex as an experience piece, but there were, there were pieces that spoiled the experience. Yeah. You know, there's no better way of putting yeah. it. You know? um, it's interesting. To me, Dunkirk is an experience movie. Yeah. I don't see much, even though it's... The gimmick is about plot. There's three plots happening at the same time. I I I watched that movie thinking it's just a purely an experience movie. I I don't know much about the plot that happens in Dunkirk. <laughs> it's funny. I didn't like Dunkirk that much. Yeah, <laughs> it's because yeah, it's 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 because of the way we I think approach movies. Like with with uh, Nolan, I always really like his cinematography, uh, and I get pulled in with visuals. That's what turns me on. That's why I'm a cinematographer. Mm -hmm. So different, different, uh, different things, different perspectives there. I just felt like there were like just logic gaps and what I felt like were writing mistakes or writing weaknesses that could have been easily fixed to make it a stronger experience. Mm. For example, uh, in the very first case, in the in the on the backdrop of what was going on in Gotham City, what, where is the reality that they would actually let him show go on the show with the clown face paint on? You're like, oh, you say it's not political. Well, fine then. No way, not happening. That's just ridiculous. Second, he admits to killing the guys on the subway on TV, 
And dude, De Niro, whatever his name is on the show, just continues casually interviewing him. Oh, no, let me hear more about this. Tell me. You, you, so you're saying you killed these guys. Why did you do that? No way. <laughs> no way. That, that, that segment goes another 30 seconds after he begins to say, I killed people. Um, so that bugged me. Uh, I also, like, does he work for a, a, a clown for rent operation that we're just supposed to accept as a normal thing back then? There, there were, like, clown emporiums where you'd, <laughs> you're, 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 you're like, hey, I got clowns. You, got, you want clowns? I got the best clowns in town. I rent them out by the hour. You need a clown to flip your sign? I got a fine sign flipping clown. I got midgets. Got big fat clowns. Any kind of clown you want. <laughs> that, that was just bizarre and just seemed like a really easy way to bring the clown yeah. gimmick into the show without being creative. <laughs> I, I, none of those things bothered me. So yeah, well, that's the kind of things that, that bug me big time Probably all the time. Watching. I hate are, are you guys just watching? Detroit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love what it looks like visually. I also, there wasn't enough. I feel like there just wasn't enough for me to buy into the, what was happening to Gotham which was an important part of the story was this like rich versus poor dichotomy and the garbage strike. And then, and then the people were just so angry and then they're all dressing like clowns and they're rioting. We never got a taste of that perspective, right? Cause, cause he wasn't a part of that. Right. Yeah. He was on the outside doing his own thing and just kind of like by coincidence ends up leading it, which is cool. I think that's really a neat idea. Um, but it just, it felt fake and forced to me it never felt authentic yeah i felt like that was a little bit thin um but i didn't feel like we needed any of that like i i really liked that like we see joker in there like he's like going through the crowd when he goes into where thomas wayne is uh before he goes in he's kind of like just semi enjoying yes. the experience yeah. solely because he knows that he started it. Yeah. He, he made an impact like that. Yes. He did, yeah. Like there's validation no, that he yeah, existed. There's no care about what it actually stands for, what it really means or anything like that. It could be anything to him. I always, I really liked that. And so in that sense, I didn't feel like I needed much more out of that. Well, I think where, you know, I think where the missed opportunity was this idea that the shooting of the TV host at the end was like the tipping point that set the city on fire. Mm. And I felt like if we felt that anxiety, if we felt like we were balancing on a tinderbox so that was ready to explode, then that tipping point would have had much more impact. Yeah. Instead, it was like he shot him, which was the tipping point for him to go to his, his new persona, completely embrace the, who he is. But for the city, it, didn't, it just didn't match up. And I so, felt like there was quite a bit of... There's, a, there's, a, the city was already violent before then by, you know, like beating up those police officers and they're like jumping over the barricades when the Waynes were there and stuff. Yeah, the the way I always and his girlfriend was like but I'm a, good but again, when the guy got that, those, that's guys the got killed. that's the effect without the cause. It's like we never really saw the cause. We just hmm. see people who are walking around acting angry, and I, I just didn't buy it. Well, the cause was was the the sim, symbol the sim, symbolism of the. You know, the, the basic, rich people suck. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I didn't think it needed that much more. Like, I was I was there. Like, I, I yeah. felt like it all made sense. I felt like it needed a lot more. I, I played some of the Arkham Asylum games. Uh, and in there, you see a lot of that dichotomy all the time, is uh, the people of Arkham against the richer people. Yeah, well, that that's always been, like, a big part of the Gotham mythos. Yeah. Right. So going into this movie... I had had that context mm. behind my head the whole time. Right. So anytime that I missed something like that, it was easy for me to quote, forgive it. It's funny it was... until they brought up Thomas Wayne. Yeah. Like I was watching this without connecting it to Batman at all. So like, I did... Gotham was out of my head. Yeah, entirely. I did too. But every and time I kind of I... wished it stayed that way. Yeah. Snake. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it, I kind of wish it stayed that way. I liked, uh, I, I liked this, you know, sort of existing outside of Batman storyline. So I like, I did too. I kept getting pulled out of Arkham, but every time they mentioned Arkham, I brought my head back into that yeah. space, uh, and I like that. I like brain brought into. I like the idea of having a comic book movie that's still based in this world, but it's shot and told very differently 
than what we're used to. I really like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I have like two opinions on that. I have two contrasting opinions on that <laughs> where okay. on one hand, I really loved... On one hand, I almost wish the whole movie had nothing to do with Gotham and Batman or superheroes or comics at all and was just... A I would piece hate that movie in New York City. That sounds like you know? a shitty movie to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, to and me, then, that sounds better. I think that sounds better. So that too. that's on that's one funny. hand. That's funny. And then on the other hand, I I like that this idea is being told through this established world of Gotham because it it the 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 context of Batman and the Joker and all that stuff when compared to what happens in right. this movie is really that's what i like uh, about it in, insane yeah it's that's what i like insane. about it yeah, yeah. like like so when like you both sides yeah so when you see like the comic book stuff and the cartoon stuff like that whole world uh knowing that where it all existed and then going into it like dark knight did it the first time right making it quote real right where you're you're looking at the comic book world but it's through a different lens and that's what joker did uh with me too is that it's you're still yeah. looking at the comic book world but it's a completely different lens and i really like that um and i'm still waiting for that for other things like a uh, like the uh last airbender for example yeah but see the different lens that's what i was expecting because that different lens is a sense of realism like it's a, it's a, it gives it a much more maybe real feeling but, but not to me it's it's not just realism that we're looking through the lens it's it's just a different way of looking at it it's just a different way of telling comic book movies well to me it heightens the expectation of of like the way they're telling their story and and the world they build yeah when they you know when it when you actively say okay i'm not going to put zam bang on the screen yeah to me then you can't just do shortcuts either you know i want to see some development i think there's a lot of boring laziness here for example, when the sign is stolen from him and he gets chased by the bullies, um, which is, you know, the kind of thing that's done in tons of movies. But I just hated the fact that he falls on the ground and they come out, you know, after they whack him in the face and then they come out and the dialogue between them is, hey guys, let's beat him up. Yeah, beat him yeah. up. Kick, kick, beat yeah. him up. That's one and of I'm my like, specific issues. Ugh. You yeah. know, it just felt, again, it's just like super lazy. It's like, wow, yeah. he needs to be beat up. You know, it's like, oh, we need the city to be going crazy, so yeah. let's just, just say, you know, so, it's just shortcuts yeah. to me. But so I did that, feel like there was a lot of really good development, though. Like, there, that was one, that is one of my specific issues. The beat-up scene? That moment. That was yeah. almost cringy. Yeah, yeah I was, I was like, like mm. yeah. that's like the first thing you think of when you sit down to write the script. Right. The, um, when we talk about people making movies and having things that have, that don't follow the contrast rule, where, where we have, uh, like... We talk about this in our other show. That's that's no longer a thing. What show? What? We don't have any other show. When we talked about uh, short films a lot, when people we we would see people looking at short or making a short film, and then they would shoot something like inside their house, and then they would leave stuff like groceries on the table. You know, when clearly they're not telling any story about those groceries. That provides a huge contrast point. It's yeah. where you're just like that shouldn't be in there. Yeah. And to me, it seems like when we're watching this movie, we've set up different contexts for ourselves to where we won't be able to forgive some things like, like for example, the cheesy dialogue in Arkham. I feel like in almost every other world of Arkham and Batman Gotham of got, yeah, sorry, Goth uh, Gotham, uh, the whole, the whole world is full of that kind of cheesy dialogue. Yeah. That's, that still bothered me, you know, watching this movie probably cause it put me into a different place, but other things like, like for example, the newspapers that they were reading on the train all had giant headlines, yeah. which you don't see a lot uh, right. nowadays, but you do in the game and you do in the comic and you do in other forms of Batman. Right. So to, to me, that it feels like there's, there's a context there that allows for those things, that it doesn't need to be contrasty. Uh, can we talk a little bit about the character piece of this itself? Yeah. Uh, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'd really like to talk about his, uh, his oh, well, stuff. The performance, we can't say enough it's about. It's amazing. Yeah. It's awesome. I, I love I every have, minute of it. I have some things about the performance. Do you? I do. Do you? I do. Really? I think this falls more on directing, though. Oh. Uh, okay. The first thing I have to say about is the, the, his running. When? When he's chased? Every time he runs, except for once. 
oh, f- his physical running, his the physical, way he runs, the way he runs. What about it? Okay, so so body functions, right? Just your motor skills. Yeah. Um, all come from a character-driven motivation. Yeah. All the time. Uh, but, uh, actors will tell you that they'll they'll develop body movements yeah. first to get into the character. Yeah. And obviously, you know, what's his name did the same thing. JP here. Yeah. Did the same thing. Um, his run in here uh, is strange. He he runs like he's a, a person who do, who doesn't run a lot, right? He he runs with this big wide stance. His his uh, mm-hmm. his arms are doing this and his legs are going all about like he's a like he's a clown basically. Uh, he had to run with big shoes on. That's yeah. that's. But he continues that way uh-huh. throughout the movie with different shoes, different outfits. Yeah. And it seems like he's doing it for a reason. It seems like the Joker runs this way. <laughs> and then there's parts in the film that he doesn't run that way. For example, when he's chasing one of the guys off of the train, right? He doesn't wacky run to him and then shoot him. He, he darts toward the dude and then stands next to him and shoots him. Like There are very specific times that he doesn't carry on these specific body movements. Interesting. And so I'm like, I feel like that's the director saying, yeah, that's good because it looks weird, right? And he just wants JP to do what he does. But then when he gets to a different uh, scene that doesn't require that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. then he just changes it without knowing what it does to the whole movie. You know what it could be? Um, Because I've, it's funny you brought the running. Did you pick up on his running? Um, No, I didn't. Me neither. But I have been, I watched a bunch of videos on Joker, like listening to Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips talk about it. Yeah. And, um, they, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, well actually Todd Phillips talked about the run specifically. And he said that it was a run that was developed by Joaquin Phoenix for the, the That's movie specifically. Like. Right. That's funny. But that in turn with how they actually, the process of making this movie yeah. is, um, a lot of this movie, they talked about their process being very open and so they would do takes, and they would do takes that were wildly different from each other. Just a lot of improv and then kind of falling back on the script if they couldn't get something crazy or interesting out of it. Right. So maybe that process of doing being experimental with how you approach the character um, caused some of those inconsistencies. I can see that. You know, where yeah. like maybe he was doing that run maybe before he even developed right the, the uh, more specific run he also well, mentioned that he didn't develop his laugh until like a few weeks into shooting see that's interesting too yeah so there's also i mean the character's arc him, himself yeah he's gradually allowing this alter ego that is the joker is growing and i'd say becomes born you know at the end right sure uh, fully realized but up up to the end Flashes of that other person who, who kills and relishes in chaos come out, right? And when he's being chased by bullies on the street, he's not that person. He's Arthur Fleck, who yeah. wears, dresses like a clown and tries yeah. to take care of his mom. And he's a bit of a sad, just a, a sad story, right? That's one run. But then you said when he was going after the guys in the subway, he had a much more deliberate pace. He you did, know? yeah. It's like, I'm going to kill these guys. Yeah. To me, that's like the dual personalities being... You could, I think you could be valid in reading it that way. Yeah. But at the end, at the very end, when he is the fully realized Joker transformed and all, he still does that run. Oh. He, still, he does the goofy yes one in the hallway after the bloody footsteps thing. He runs back and forth. And oh, that's true. He does do, yeah. He does do the goofy running, the wide stance running. Um, anyway, th- that inconsistency is, bothers me. Another thing is uh, his laugh. And this was a, a plot-driven thing where his laugh is supposed to be a uh, medical con- condition. The first time I saw that, I was like, that is some bullshit. That is some really top-quality bullshit. I hate that at all. <laughs> On the bus? Completely, Yeah. Really? Um, because to that me... That really affected me. I, I felt, I felt that, very, yeah. very sad for him. Yeah, sure. I was deeply Sure, but sad. it was, in its own way, it can be. And, this, and context gets in the way a little bit here. Because it's my idea of the Joker that's fighting with what I'm seeing on the screen. Right. Right. And so I can understand that can be a bit of an invalidating thing. But the way I have always thought of the Joker 
the character that just envelops the entire, every, every time anyone's played the Joker, this is what has popped into my head, that he's maniacal because th what's scary about him is that he finds everything funny, right? When he's killing people, when he's bombing places, he, none of this matters to him. He's completely apathetic and he laughs for the sake of insanity or for the sake of uh, finding very dark humor in all of it, right? And so that's always what made him scary to me. I'm just like, oh, wow, so you just didn't like the idea that he just happened to laugh exactly. from a head trauma, exactly? Because uh, now, now his laugh is is a deliberate plot thing, and it has nothing to do with the character anymore. Now it's used as a as a. I, I disagree. I, with I, that. I disagree. I disagree. With that. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, there's there's two ways of looking at it. Yeah. From my point of view, one is that if it's a medical condition. Fully, completely, from 100%. We never take into question that it's a medical condition. It's absolutely a medical condition. I hate it. If it's actually, if it's a medical condition, but it's actually not really, and then he takes a hold of it later on, and... Uh, well, what? I think, I think that... I, I like that this is a completely fresh take on Joker, yeah. for the most part. Yeah. And so, this again, it's a context thing, I guess, where I went into it throwing out any notion that right. I had of what, how Joker should be which or is whatever. Great. Yeah, which is a great way to so do So that, it was his condition was really affecting to me. Uh, and just, again, performance-wise, just I love how painful that laugh is. But there's also different laughs that he has. And I like that you could tell the difference between his his condition laugh where he's like I couldn't in pain. tell the difference. There was no difference. And that, well, like when he's in the, the club. Yeah. The comedy club. When he's in the audience. Yeah, when he's yeah. in the audience, yeah. and he laughs at all the wrong cues because he doesn't understand what makes it. You joke can see work. it on his face. What that you he's just like, said there. He says, "I'm trying. I'm trying to fit in." What yeah. you guys just said there is weird. Why? Because to me, that says that's a medical condition laugh, right there in the audience. He's obviously laughing at the wrong times. To me, that's not because of his mental issue. To me, that's well, because of his. Except it was he, a totally a different, different laugh. laugh. It's an entirely it completely different. different. Laugh. I, I wouldn't yeah. say that. I'd say no. The he laugh had a smile it, on yeah, his face. The other different. one, he looked like yeah. he was crying. Yeah, like he was gonna cry. One, yeah, yeah one is yeah. like about to cry, very painful. Sure. And then the other one is like and a sharper. Can't breathe, but he does know? that all the time. To mm -hmm. me, what? No, it's different. Dan. That's fine. That's fine that you guys see it as different, and I see it as the same though. That's the and I'm telling you it is different that's that can be anyway that very much bothered me facts <laughs> none you're not gonna list any <laughs> no, no no i'm saying i just stated facts oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah yeah objective that's what Obje the word facts objective means facts. Yeah. Yes. yeah uh yeah i saw a clear difference between the laughs oh, yeah and, and to me the, the the medical laugh was cool the idea that it was a condition because to me what I saw was this broken human being who would eventually become something something with real power and influence. Yeah. That's what he always wanted. Yeah. When he was when he was the sad, broken Arthur, the laugh was a weakness. Yeah. And triumphant <clears throat> Joker, yeah. the laugh becomes a strength. Yeah, and, and like I mean we're we'll we'll talk about It I goes from like his shield to weapon. The Anything that we read into it is can be, can be, can be validated. I think yeah. that way. We we have established that. I know. That's so now we're saying things that we feel. That we feel. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. It's not. That's what bothers me. It is okay. <laughs> it bothers. That's me. exactly okay. It very much bothers me. Well, I'm gonna keep well, saying what it I the feel. Other way, so boom. For me, like ruins discussion, because then it's like this happened. Yes. We had this conversation no, the no, no. first this time we this talked. Hap this happened, the and then my opinion on the matter. Mm. That, that's all. But we're, to, but we're disagreeing about what happened. You know? Mm. It's, like, it's like, hey, do you like pomegranate flavor? No. Do you like it? Yes. But I don't see it as pomegranate. Yeah. I see it as uh, orange juice. But that's an interesting conversation. It no, and yes, it's very boring. I want to know why you I think that's same orange juice. Why do you think it's juice. orange juice? Let's talk about it. That's, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, that's weird. Nope, that's human. Okay, Where so go also his, uh, his social awareness. So that was something that 
bother the self awareness. See, but the self awareness is also. I didn't self. I didn't think it was self. Again, it's connected to I think the way we contextualize the Joker and contextualize him in this movie. Because the way I saw him socially aware, he was at times very socially aware, and then at other times completely to himself and not aware whatsoever. And that also really bothered me that you couldn't f- really know what his medical condition was, what his mental illness was. Well, at first I'm like, oh, he, he his mom's obviously delusional, and so he's delusional too because it's genetics. Sure. And then it's like, well, no, he was adopted. Right. <laughs> like, so oh, okay. Well, the thing is he, he got abused though, right? And yeah, so yeah, apparently yeah. the abuse And made head him, injuries. Yeah. So apparently that did and something to him. And his meds too. So yeah, yeah, and when he gets meds. off his meds, he's more socially aware, it seems. Yeah. So I think that's normal. Uh, well, not normal, but that makes sense to the me. The bit but when the, he, oh, one sec. I'm when, holding. When he, when he's on his meds, for example, when he he's taking, he's going, he's doing the clown thing, right? Um, he gets the sign stolen. the The boss fires him, and he's trying to explain to the boss that uh, why would I take a sign, right? He's he's like behaving normally. A normal person would behave this way. Yeah. And then he gets fired and he's very angry. And then he, he's angry about the betrayal that the one guy said that he tried to buy a gun from him. He comes in, he even makes a joke about punching out the clock, right? That's all very socially aware. And he's on the meds during that time. And then as later, opposed to? As opposed to other times when he's not socially aware. When he, yeah. he goes over to the girl, and this is also when he's on his meds, when he sees the girl in the hallway and he says, hey, and yeah. I'm like, that was hilarious because he's just not socially aware. That's the thing. That, that he, he can't be both. And if he is both, then... Why can't he be both? Because that's thematically hilarious. It's, it's disingenuous to a character. Why can't somebody have the complexities to understand a certain situation that's socially not, and, and not another situation? He can. He can have those things. Like, he it works never, in that environment. Yeah, yeah. He knows those people. Yeah. He can have that time to understand yeah. the social situation there. But maybe he has zero experience with women and flirting. And maybe that he does, and that is why he's socially. I think that's weird a valid. That. I think it's a valid argument. In my head, it's not a valid argument, though. I had no problem with social awareness. My problem was with self awareness. Hmm. Ready for this? Mm-hmm. Ready for this? Yeah, bring it on. I'm not quite ready. Hold on. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Uh, so I hate. I hate when a movie uses a character to literally speak that speak out mm-hmm. the moral of the story, mm-hmm. and uh, the Joker does that, and in a very specific way in which I don't believe Arthur Fleck's character would have even been cognizant of. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that I, was a little strange. The every, every talk show, yes, yeah, so when yeah. he's on a talk show, right before he executes the host, he gives us a very quick little speech about basically like this is what happens when society, you know, doesn't you know doesn't take care of people and stomps all over them and treats us terrible. Uh, and you know, he had a little bit of a morality message yeah. saying, oh, "Look what happened to me." I I don't believe he would have been aware of that personally nor do I like that it was said verbally. Uh, I think he definitely would be aware of it at that point because that is what his whole life has been, and he's gone through a metamorphosis. Uh, metamorphosis. How about in the very in the, beginning? At the very beginning? Hard to disagree. Boom. <laughs> I'm still arguing your point. Yeah, at the very beginning, uh-huh. uh, when, he's, uh, when he's talking to his, the social worker, when he's talking to the, the, the psychiatrist, mm-hmm. uh, he... Or actually, I guess this is a little bit more later. But when she says that they cut the funding, um, he gives a full-on speech about how she doesn't listen, mm-hmm. and that's a, that's a very self-aware speech that he gives. He's like, "I'm telling you these things. You need to listen to what I'm talking about and give me feedback." It, it's a kind of not at the same time. It sort of it actually sort of illustrates that he's living in non-reality um, because. She, he's not paying attention to the facts that are in front of him. One, two, he says things that aren't true. You know, he's like, "You ask me if I never, if, if I have any negative thoughts. I only have negative thoughts." Right. But we actually had seen, we had seen flashes of brightness from him throughout the movie. That that all seems like a genuine 
that seems genuine behavior from him though like he's not just insane he doesn't just say things that are that are lies yeah i also believe that you can put on a smile and still have negative thoughts true no probably not true (laughs) (laughs) whether he's aware of it or not it didn't it didn't strike me that his character would have had the wherewithal to say basically the moral of the story sure which it just felt like kind of forced that okay this is what the audience should have concluded by now and so let's have the joker say it to me a bigger sin the bigger sin was that it was actually said by him. Yeah. I hated that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, did, it didn't bother me at all. But that's just the point. It bothered me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. Um, here's another specific issue I had. Yeah. I loved the reveal that his, his girlfriend was never his girlfriend, and it was just... It was dumb. I, and just dumb. all in his head. Dumb review. And his was fantasy. It, was it, though? Was uh, it actually fake? We don't know. We don't know. Okay, Maybe she was crazy. <laughs> never mind, then. Maybe she was crazy. <laughs> I won't say anything. <laughs> maybe, maybe he's not even real. <laughs> he's Batman. <laughs> maybe this whole thing, he's Batman. Right? He's Batman. Yeah. So actually, the, the end of the movie... Is the reveal. He's been in Arkham Asylum the whole time. It's all yeah. a dream. I'm actually pretty sure this is a sequel to Inception. Actually, this is oh Inception. Oh my god. The original <laughs> Inception. This is actually a prequel to it. Oh, this is a prequel. Yeah. Right. I think most people felt the way you did. It was it was weird that he it felt strange and disingenuous that he had an actual girlfriend. And I was uh, like, what no, is No, you don't know my point. That was not my point. I do know your point. Know point. I, I am about to tell point. everyone what your point no. is. Don't waste no. our audience. No! 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 I know. No! 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 Hey, the real time. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. All right. <laughs> okay. Here's, here's my problem with, with that. I like that it happened. I like that it went that way. <laughs> I like that. This is the problem. Yes. The way they they reveal it twice. <laughs> they reveal it by him being in her house and she's like, uh, what are you doing here? You're the guy from the other day, right? You need yeah. to leave. I think they should have left it at that. Not show the flashback. Then they of show all some, the moments. I hated that. That was way too yeah. heavy handed. That's that was my other specific issue. I thought the reel was dumb. To, <clears throat> to be fair. Taylor, I was about to say exactly that. How do I know that you were? You don't. There you go. I can't trust you. Was there any mate in that can? No, thankfully. I I checked before I threw it. Then we're cool. We're cool. I don't like wasted mate. That really gets under my skin. Me too. That's why I checked before I threw. Um, Yeah, I'm mostly... Yeah, I agree. There were a couple times where I felt like it was just a little too heavy handed. Yeah, I was like, I didn't. I didn't so we didn't yeah, come on. Hey, speaking of heavy handed, the music I hated. Oh, really? I I loved all but one moment. Yeah, and you know I, what that I was. I know the moment. Let's talk about. Hey! We can establish that like, like, music uh, has certain feelings to it. Yeah. For uh, example, no, that no music. Is uh, is triumphant, yeah. It, it well, it conjures up in me the image of a marching band at a high school, sure, yeah, you know, football game. Yeah. Also, the 1990s, where this whole movie, it, heavy visual and audio aesthetic, grounded in like the 60s to maybe early 70s, and so that uh, this whole movie is grounded in whatever Batman's world is. Specifically, is when it takes place. This, yeah, 81. How so? Like Batman's a millennial? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Actually, Batman grown up is is in the eighties. Also, they're both in the eighties. Yeah. Well, because if you think of like if we're talking about like Christian Bale's Batman in like the mid two, not Christian Bale's Batman. I'm just mean Batman. Man, it just said such a heavy sixties vibe to me. Seventies. I guess TV he was show, the especially the talk yeah. show. Anyway, well. My point is that had a '70s aesthetic. It's, it's late '70s. All the other songs did ring to an era and a, and a very specific kind of vibe, and that one was like out of left field. 
Maybe that one. And I, I didn't, it didn't fit the tone. I didn't. Maybe think. it didn't fit the tone because it was supposed to be representing his psycho- psychological take of that moment. He, he was, he was, he's very separated from himself. He completed his transformation. Therefore, we play a track of music that represents that feeling. Mm. Ugh. Don't like it. I don't no, either. I, I hate either. that. But that was a uh, exp- that was a argument that could be said. <laughs> well, I would just we've with established that this already. All right, also, can, no, we, can we again. just move I'll on? I'll do it again from the establishment no, it, that it keeps everybody can have a different experience about that's, things. That's not the point. Okay. That is not the point. What is the point? The point is. Why do you ask him that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not. No. Gonna what is the point? I'm not I want to talk it. about it. Do you? Yeah. Do you want to go to Northern again? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The, the different observations is not something that I have a problem with. I don't care that everyone has and brings their own context to a movie. That's fine. If the movie is pretty much openly interpretive and everybody brings their own context also, then they can each build a different definition of what the movie is. Not what it meant to them, but what it is. And so that's a strange thing. You know, when you can say, when you can look at a shot, this is just an just a imaginary um, example. But if you can look at a shot and say that's a wide shot and somebody else says, mm, that's a close-up to me, mm-hmm. then you've now altered definitions and now you have to come to an agreement on what a shot is before you can have any more growth in discussing the subject. Could you make an example that's a little more grounded in like an, an actual thing? Because I don't no, and see that. Not movies? I don't, yeah, I don't see that as a realistic I mean, the, the wide right. shot close-up thing's never going to happen, but what is a, an example of something? Well, we just talked about a bunch of them would happen. In, in Joker. Uh, for example, the bloody footsteps part. Right, right. but I think that kind of thing yeah. can happen with any movie. Yeah. Any kind it of can. movie. It can. And does. It does, but to some movies it does way more often. The ones that are openly interpretive. The ones that don't build enough context of their own to give you... Like, for example, okay, just just a very down-to-earth movie. uh, Freaking, I don't know, let's say Jurassic Park. Okay, Jurassic Park, everyone can agree that it's uh, dinosaurs that are in a park and then they escape and everyone goes crazy. It's pretty easy to know where the boundaries are in that movie. But if the movie was shot a little bit more interpretive to where it was like, you're not sure if they're actually dinosaurs all in one park or if there's other dinosaurs from other places or if all the people are, are real or if there's some dream sequences or something like that. Like if it becomes more openly interpretive, then people will stop deciding on what's, what right. is the definition. So, but then the question becomes if a movie is this way or that way, yeah. is there just not a value in sitting down and discussing no, a there, movie that is a certain There is way? if you talk about your opinion on what happened, but when it's hard to, it's hard to uh, compare opinions when they're not of the same thing. Because that thing, we're having disagreements about what it was. So the opinions are, become a, different opinions about different things entirely. So my opinion on the Joker is because he's, uh, I, I don't think his mental illness was well captured. Therefore, I have an opinion that his mental illness was sloppy. Somebody yeah. else might think, the mental illness was perfectly captured. Therefore, my opinion is that his, I don't know, maybe I have an opinion that it was also sloppy, but it's based on a completely different definition. So the definitions are hard to get straight here. What, would, do, you, what do you think movies should be like? Do you think all movies should just be absolutely clear in what is happening? I'm not sure if that really is in I, I don't think that makes sense with the, the argument I was talking about. Yeah, it's not about what the movies are like, it's about how we talk about them. Oh, okay. Is that correct? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's 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 about agreeing about the definitions. Yeah. The I just don't don't connect. <laughs> I don't connect to the disconnect <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> that you're having. Yeah, you no, know? no, and I get like, it. Like and that's, I that's feel totally like it's, understandable. It's yeah. a perfectly valid pastime to sit around and debate the validity of, of one person's opinion versus yeah. another. Okay, well, there's, here's another thing, right? So if you look at uh, paintings, for example, yeah, uh, all of us can look at a Thomas Kincaid painting of a house or something like that and talk about the, uh, the ways in which he draws roofs or the ways in which he draws water. And we have different opinions on those things, on the water, on the house, and whatever, his painting style. But if we look at, say, a, uh, ooh, I don't remember the dude's name, but the person who, who paints squares, right? Um, if we all look at that, 
and we all have a different definition, and then formulate opinions on top of that, the opinions can't compare because they're completely different on different different things. But you can still share and talk about it. Absolutely, you can. It, they don't compare though. Mm-hmm. They're just they're just all automatically valid. They're all just thoughts. Yeah. But that's it. But we're not talking to each other. Yeah. We're talking to the. I still wouldn't that go that far. I wouldn't say that you have to automatically validate just because it, it is. I mean, if if you have an opinion about some cubist piece, which means something to you yeah. and something different to me, and what it means to you, but that's different. Bothers me. But that's different though. How we're talking about if we have the same if we have different opinions on one piece, but that's what you're saying, right? Well, we like have, this, we have, this is yeah, a piece. We have different opinions on one piece. Yeah. But if we have different interpretations of that piece that then formulate our opinions, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm looking at Joker as a different movie that you're looking at Joker as. Right. Right. But if I fundamentally like feel that your interpretation yeah, yeah. Is, is, a, is problematic, yeah. what's wrong with trying to poke holes in your interpretation? I, I, so I've been trying to do that for the last few times and I feel like I'm getting nowhere with it because... Because I, I can't ever come to a concluding point. Oh, where... you want to get somewhere. See, <laughs> I, that's the problem. <laughs> I suppose, I guess. I, I want to have a discussion. We are. Yeah. If it's, uh, it feels like we're talking at each other a lot. It feels like I'm saying, okay, this, is what my, this was my opinion. This is what I interpreted the movie as. And then you guys say, okay, well, I disagree because I think it was this way. And we're like, okay, uh, both of those are views. Isn't that this show? I, it always has been from the very beginning, yeah. But it, it's much easier. Okay, this I think this is where it is. It's much easier when we all talk about movies that we can mainly agree on what the subject matter was. And funny enough, Mother was one of those where we could all agree what it was and what it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars, uh, Jack, uh, Jurassic World 2, any movie that's not very openly interpretive, we're all, we all can decide what the movie was and what it wasn't and our views on those things. And those, those are fun ones to me. Mm. These ones aren't. These ones to feel like we're talking at each other. I'm having fun. That's good. Yeah, I was I'm not, too. I was enjoying discussing <laughs> all this. I'm not, I'm not angry. I'm not, having, I'm not having a bad time. It gets frustrating it trying to It looks like you're having a bad time. It's, fru- it's frustrating. <laughs> you don't look angry, but it does look like you're not having a good time It's here. It's frustrating trying to compare opinions when the definitions are different. Your frustration frustrates me. <laughs> Your frustration of my frustration legitimately frustrates me. This is why I don't like talking about what I'm just talking about just now. It's such a deja vu. It is. Because we've had this like exact, exact episode. Yeah. And I feel like it was like the first or second time we did a talkies episode. It was, no, it was the first time that we talked about an interpretive movie. Do you remember what it was? It wasn't Blade Runner. So I remember we got like really into this and yeah. we ended up with an episode where we're like well we didn't talk about the movie very much we've done that a ton we've done that yeah. <laughs> no but we always do that yeah we just always do that. like star wars became about episode three yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i think the problem comes when you say well that's an opinion yeah you don't have to stop there yeah. right like you can hear the opinion and go you see okay. i disagree with okay. that opinion let's get back into the movie and and <laughs> And take this for for a run, okay? So, I uh, let's see. There was there was one specific thing besides the laugh. Oh, the music. Didn't like that mom. Yeah. Okay, so the music. Uh, I hated the music. Yeah, uh, the score and the songs, or or one or the other. Score. You hated the score. Yeah. Uh, when when we first start out with him. Uh, uh, getting punched in the head, uh, you know, he, the sign sign is stolen. Yeah, hit across the head, and everyone beats him up. Uh, they leave him, and then he's uh, he's laying in the street, and then we have the slow dolly out, mm. and what sounds like very sad music, and his playing. his uh, squirting and flower. His, I loved that, that the squirting flower. <laughs> I thought that out. was awesome. That was funny. Uh, I'd much rather no music at that point. Uh huh. The sad music on top of a sad situation makes it, it look like you're trying you're to get emotion from me. Heavy-handed. Yeah. yeah. It, sound, it feels very that way. And so there are times like when the Joker is, uh, I don't remember exactly what's happening, but I think it was when his transformation was complete and he does whatever he does. The music playing at that moment is, again, isn't this crazy? Aren't you impressed? And it's like, yes, 
just stop with the music already. It feels like every time the music played, the score played, it was saying it was repetitive. It was redundant. You know, I already got the message visually. You don't need to tell me the message again with music. Now, the things that I really like are the times like when it's playing, uh, like when he was dying his hair and he's, he's becoming the Joker. He's deciding to put on that face. We have, uh, we have him dancing inexplicably in the, yeah. in the bathroom. Yeah. To to that old song of, uh, I think put on a happy face is the one. Oh, it was smile. It's something. something. Smile, something like that. Anyway, it's a, it's an old timey music that is meant to make you feel pretty happy and just glad about life, but it's playing over what's definitely a bad thing happening, and that's an interesting contrast. Yeah. It, it makes me think it, the music is now playing for a reason and it communicate something to me it's not redundant you know had it been playing like really twisted music at that part i would have been like stop you know yeah i, I agree with that I, I felt that like um it's funny like i i came out of the movie liking the score like the score itself like the sound of it and all the that sound of it is but fine yeah i actually don't really remember any of it other than thinking that it was cool all the the music that made an impression on me was the uh the needle drops, you know, using other, other, other music, music. you know. Yeah. yeah, the songs definitely stood out more to me than the score yeah, did. Probably because, because I, I wasn't so into the experience, so I was I was kind of looking at it from back here rather than in here. Yeah, I much rather like I like being in movies like Dunkirk, for example. I don't care about so much about the storytelling technique. I'm so invested in the cinematography and the look of everything. That I don't, I don't even, I didn't even realize it was supposed to be a three-part story all taking place at parallels. I, I put it together later, but I, it just wasn't in my head. And so for 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 this, I was not in the movie so much that I'm looking at it back here and I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> yeah, I I tend to be of the opinion that less is more with scoring. Yeah. But it's funny because when I make a movie, I tend to overscore like, yeah. big time. <laughs> I do too, actually. Like I, I really too. over rely on music, and yeah. it's been like it's f- super easy to rely on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a shortcut yeah. to emotion. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's a life hack. It is. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <life> hack. <laughs> it's like the first piece of feedback I get. I've I've always gotten from like mentors and yeah. you know people I really want critical feedback from. They're always like, "Just too much music, man. <laughs> Dial back to <the> music." <laughs> That's funny. Did you guys have any issues with music? Uh, the, the the marching band yeah, song, the <laughs> the stadium banger. Yeah, I thought that, that was so strange. It was probably the only part, and I think part of it did have to do with context because yeah. we had already seen that exact footage many times. Like before seeing the movie, that stairway had become the iconic yeah. image of the Joker before even. Going to That's the movie, funny. setting up context with the trailer. Right. Yeah, the there trailer, so, the poster, the, was so the poster is him doing that yeah. on those stairs, yeah. right? And in the trailer, when he does that dance, it's like a super dramatic, sort of somber and slow song. Yeah. And so, seeing what we had already seen, but now playing to like, na na na, it felt like a parody. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I that's that. that's really interesting because I don't think filmmakers know that they're right? usually. Filmmakers usually aren't re- uh, connected with to the, the marketing yeah. stuff, which at is all. why it was really funny when they did. Uh, what was the, uh, the the DC movie that everyone hated? Suicide really, Squad. Suicide Squad. When they said that the people who made the trailer, we want you guys to edit the movie. Serious? Yeah, that happened. That happened. That's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, that that movie had because that it sucked. had because it had an movie. incredible trailer. Yeah, but it was because it but it had nothing to do with the movie. Yeah, yeah. We were talking That's about how sad it was like for uh, <laughs> sad it was for Jared Leto. Yeah, that uh, he'll, he'll he'll go down as pretty much the only the, person to play the Joker. Yeah, no one cared about that. No, yeah, that, that is an icon. It yeah. didn't become like a <laughs> career <laughs> marker, you know, yeah. icon. Yeah, he's, he's crying in this when he, he went to go see this movie, and he's just crying. Yeah, he's yeah. like, I, I, why didn't I do this one? <laughs> <laughs> why didn't I just wait? <laughs> His Joker was so dumb. Yeah. Ha ha ha! There's <laughs> if we can talk about Suicide Squad a little bit more. There, I've never seen it. Okay, so, well, it's in the trailer. At the end of the trailer, when he's, like, staring right into the camera, and he's like, they're like, are you going to hurt me? And he's like, I'm not going to hurt you. Oh, yeah, he says, God, what does he say? No, he said, are you going to kill me? And he goes, I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to hurt you really, really 
badly. And it's like, <laughs> that's it? Good line. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, at least so, I won't die. Yeah, that's not that intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to take you. It was very anticlimactic. Yeah. To, like, to me, yeah, that I don't know. Whatever. I mean, because like, I guess you could read it differently. Because like, I'm thinking of when he says, I'm going to hurt you really, really badly. It's, to me, it seems like he doesn't care about the killing. He cares about the pain. Yeah, I, I I get that, but it, yeah. it the way it was delivered. When you sure. see it, it from Jared Leto so with the ha 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 tattooed <laughs> yeah. on his forehead, yeah. and you just ugh. yeah 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 the way it was delivered. That that Joker looked like he was sponsored by Monster Energy drinks. He was a Kyle. <laughs> oh my God, he was a Kyle. <laughs> That's really funny. He's a That's Kyle. amazing. Kyle Joker. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a movie called Kyle. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh, I think Joker is the best comic book movie since Dark Knight. Whoa! 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 <laughs> I'll say I'll say this much, right? Whoa! <laughs> Damn! What, there's there are some movies that are that are made to where you're like, I'm really happy this movie was made, right? Even if you don't like the movie very much. For example, Overlord is one of those for me. I'm really happy someone decided to make a Nazi zombie movie. That's freaking incredible to me. Yeah. Whether or not it was good, don't right. care. <laughs> In this instance, that's the same way I feel about Joker. I uh, feel like I'm glad this movie was made. I don't really like it, but I'm glad it was made. Yeah. It's funny. I've mostly, t- I've mostly torn this movie down to pretty much everyone that's asked me about it, uh, but I would largely agree with what you just said. Mm. I, I think <clears throat> in terms of uh, an artistic achievement especially, it's the most interesting use of comic book source material since The Dark Knight. I'd say that's true. Interesting use, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like it's, it's worth your time kind of thing. <laughs> it's definitely worth your time, yeah. Like when I, when I left the theater, I was thinking, would I watch this again? I was like, yeah, well, I, I definitely would, not for entertainment purposes probably. I'd probably study it more. But it's not painful. It's not a painful watch. It's such a crazy way to... Like the ending of this movie, that's like such a insane thing to do. Like we haven't touched yeah. on any of the uh, controversy around this film, yeah. uh, media wise, which I almost don't want to. Is that a can of worms you're holding? I don't. I, don't, I actually don't, don't want. Hey, hey, could you keep that closed, please? Yeah. Sorry. Once that's <laughs> open. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I'm and it's one of those clown the can of worms. Ones that goes, <laughs> <laughs> oh, can- actually, that is what it means. They're called a can, a can of worms. Can of worms. Yeah. Okay. I just really. Uh, admire the boldness of shooting an ending with a character that is so just messed up yeah. and then shooting it in a way that almost does glorify it like it, saying it that does. this is yeah. a good Dude, thing you know okay. so this yeah. is interesting so I, I don't think that the i obviously don't think the joaquin phoenix or the filmmaker are saying you should definitely go kill people. No, they because are. Because that's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. They but, should probably go to jail. But, they but as, go to jail. A, uh, as a piece of art, I think that is extremely yeah. provocative. Very risk-taking. Yeah. yeah. I, I definitely would side with that. And it makes me uncomfortable. Uh, it, me too. Well, I was uncomfortable at the end of it. And when you told me that people were applauding in the theater. Uh, that's actually what made, turn me off more of the movie, was yeah. I felt like, I felt like people all around me were getting the wrong Wrong message. The wrong message, yeah. and and that made me dislike the movie more. So See, I'm like, well, they didn't communi- They could have communicated better. Yeah, that's, that's really, really interesting. interesting. Yeah, to me, there were a lot of parts where I felt like they were obviously going for empathy yeah. with a with a deranged person, a person that's damaged, and like this is just a sad story. Right. And they showed him do something that was very strange and you know against social mores, and the audience laughed like it was a gag, right. like it was yeah. a bit. Well, then Our maybe audience that's was kind of annoying. maybe that's good though. I mean, because because it, it could be like. You know, they have a different context, obviously, for the Joker. To them, maybe it's like a video game. It's like something that's yeah. just so to me, it, out it was there like that it these matter. these are people who laugh at people with disabilities. That's what it felt like <laughs> to I'm me just too. Like, you yeah. guys are when, terrible. When you told yeah. me that that they applauded, I was like, that sounds really dark. But <laughs> yeah, I kind of think that um, maybe that's not how they think. You know, I feel like they it's did. Marvel's they, fault. They obviously it's Marvel's fault. <laughs> Marvel has conditioned general audiences to laugh at everything. Is that what it is? Yes, that's what it is. Conspiracy theory. <laughs> Marvel. Wait, has, what? That's not conspiracy, though. Uh, yes, it is conspiracy. They're Marvel con- is conspiring 
<laughs> against general audiences back to make people laugh okay. at things I want to talk and about, bring joy to the world. That's well, fucked up. I want to talk about one scene <laughs> yes. specifically that I really, Disney. really... Disney. That I really enjoyed. Jeez. Yes, go with you. I, I, it was uh, the scene where he killed uh, the big guy who gave him the gun. Mm. Yeah. I, I loved that scene. I loved amazing, that scene. Yeah. It was awesome. It was so... Uh, what's the word? Not traumatic, but... Uh, it was visceral. Yeah. It was violent. Yeah. Damn. It was dramatic. No, no, no. It was... <laughs> funny? He, no, <laughs> that's, that's the word. It was hilarious. No. <laughs> so he stabs the guy right in the eye, and then... Ugh, like like the really violent where he like slams his head against the wall yeah. several times. Yeah, that I was like, oof, my, man, that was pretty heavy. But it's after that part that I really liked when everything's bloody and he's he's acting as if what he did was justified. Yeah, and he's sitting there like, do you ever watch that TV show? Right. Yeah. And the other guy is just traumatized. Yeah. And he's like crying and he's trying to get out of the thing and he can't reach the doorknob yeah. or the lock. And at that point, I was just, I was so heavy hearted at that point. I'm like, what is the Joker going to do at this point? We've now set up that he's, he, he does not care at all about the violence that he, yeah. that he does. He's and capable of he's deliberate capable, murder. He's capable of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So we've set that up. And now this guy's trying to get out who potentially could die. We don't know. And, uh, that made a very uncomfortable situation. And I really enjoyed that the filmmaker was a lot, was able to pull that off yeah yeah I really liked that. yeah that was a great moment as a uh, as a gore snob i loved the violence it was and the really gore in well this done film. in the yeah. whole movie yeah yeah the whole the, movie yeah the gunshots yeah. on the yeah. on the subway that scene got me how that that scene we just talked about got you where like i was expecting them to hit home on that same opening scene with uh where him he getting gets, beat up he gets beat up yeah, yeah. And, and i thought that would just push him over the edge for future actions he would take. And so I wasn't expecting them to get shot. And so when he, at that point, shoots them and, and blood goes flying on the, on the window and like, yeah. that guy's dead, I was like deeply disturbed. By yeah, that. I was very surprised too. Yeah. But the, the scene right after that too, when he chases the yeah, other guy off the train, I was like, oh my God. Yeah, he's like, because <laughs> then that's another choice he makes where it's like, it's not like he's deliberately... Well, it, it at first it starts almost as self defense, right? Instinctive. Yeah. I'm going to just shoot to protect myself. But then it grows. But then, yeah, it yeah. grows. He's like, wait a second, I can, I can do these things. I can do these things. This yeah. So powerful. there is an element of the audience that really identified with the Joker's story arc, for whatever reason. All the mental ill people. No, but <laughs> the, I mean, they they saw the ending as triumph and they clapped. Right? They really, oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, that that person is a uh, we'll just say is embodied by who we went to the movies with. Mm -hmm. Won't name names. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we went with someone who fell right into that category, just pumped, you know, at the end of the movie sure. and applauded and yeah. and laughed at all those moments that I thought it was weird to laugh at. <laughs> and uh, and so I was questioning him about it after the movie, and I'm like, don't you think that was a little messed up, you know? And and he's like, well, on the you know on the on the train it was self defense, and then from then on, you know, as people had it coming, they they'd all wronged him in some way. Right. And I'm like, oh, yes, it wasn't self defense after no. when he chased the third guy. And honestly, all the big clown guy did was. He he wasn't willing to take the heat when Arthur snitched on him right. for giving him a gun to protect himself. Right, exactly. You know, I'm like he didn't have it coming. Yeah. You know, um, I think that what I think if we're talking about this this abstract generalized audience, yes, right, <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> hey, which isn't a real entity in yeah. any way. And, uh, <laughs> I think they what what is happening there is it's. A revenge against society at large. Yeah, it's society at large bullies this this uh, person with mental issues, and then that person with mental issues gets to exact their revenge on society at large. And there's a certain level of catharsis that comes yeah. with that. Yeah. Um. But then, what's disturbing about the movie is the the details of it. Yeah. Where it it is 
it's not justified at all. Like that's what we see. Well, yeah, like the two cops, right? Like Like they did. A a lot of people seem to enjoy seeing those two cops get basically stomped down. I forgot what torn apart by the crowd on the subway. Oh, yeah. So they chase him onto the subway. Yeah, yeah. and and in that context, they step into the role of the bad guy pursuing our hero, the Joker, right? And the mob ends up turning on them and you know and just demolishing them. Yeah. And that was another opportunity that could have been like a really dark moment as you watch society's underbelly turn on its public servants, you know. Yeah. Um, but it, it instead it was very like one dimensional. It's like, oh yeah, the cops are bad, so <laughs> they're supposed to be killed here. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I would agree, but I I I definitely see what you're talking. Those about. Those cops definitely didn't have it coming. Right. right they yeah. weren't. They weren't the bad guys. Right. I, I love that they didn't have it coming and they got destroyed like that. Like it's. Like, yeah. I, I just that. wish it. It's I felt it more. I just. Yeah. It just seemed like again. You know this odd. These, these people that 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 killed the or whatever happened to yeah. those cops. It, it. They. They felt like part of the background. Mm. Yeah. And and to me, with the whole the the ending where he's talking to the talk show host, um, Robert De Niro's character, I felt like built up this uh this grounded guy who's who, who, he knows what's going on he's very sober and he's very lucid he, like he understands things and so when he says to like the joker you don't know me you know and and you you take pleasure in killing these guys and whatever like you're rooting for him you're rooting for robert de niro and you're like yeah i mean he's definitely wrong joker's definitely wrong and then joker lashes out with this thing and shoots him in the head and i'm just like like at that moment i'm like oh my God, like that's to me. I I really empathized with the talk show host, right? yeah. Which I, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to do. Yes. Not with the Joker, and then when he shoots him, I'm just like, my God, like that. That's a that's a heavy hitting. I feel like there. now let's all pray to the movie making gods that this never happens. <laughs> but if there was a sequel, yeah, to this movie that utilized the same character, uh, that introduced Batman as the as the hero yeah it would not fly at all uh of repositioning repositioning joker now as the antithesis to good to oh, the right. symbol of mm. you know right the, the the batman is the one who truly defends the people yeah right right and so if we tried to pull that off in another movie I don't think if you're a fan of this film, that film doesn't work. Right. I think what could make that potential film really interesting and what would get me excited about that would be not like introducing Batman, but still not repositioning Joker, like rolling with that and yeah. trying to, f- how now do that you, could be like, really cool. How that's, do you get Batman to fit into that? See, you know? That's, that's one of the things that I really like about this film that I really, that I'm really concerned now about because because I really like that the film positioned itself the way it did, at least the way we've read it, which is this is definitely a bad guy or definitely a person who's, who's not acting good <laughs> um, and is definitely evil. There's, there's an evil part here. Yeah. And we're making him look like the hero. I really like that that's a, a thing that someone can do with film and especially something as big as this movie. Right. I think that's really cool and iconic. Yes. Uh, Same. But I feel like people aren't receiving it that way, that they're receiving it like it's a... Absolutely. It's that's, a hero film. Yeah, that's where the controversy stars, stirs from. Yeah. You know? Right. So these people that are essentially saying like, oh, this film glorifies violence and promotes the kind of things we're trying to stop all yeah. over the world. Well, I'm saying it does do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It, it does glorify that kind of stuff. And I like that. Right. It, it does do that, but... Yeah. It does it for an artistic purpose. That's what I assume they yeah. are, but I don't think Todd Phillips is that smart. Mm. I really don't think he is. I think he made a film that he really thinks is going to be iconic, and I don't think he really positioned himself as a person who wants to do any kind of social commentary. I think he just wanted to say, hey, what if we made the Joker really empathetic Damn. and just didn't know about the... you know. Damn. Todd Phillips, if you're watching, comment <laughs> you're below. Comment below. <laughs> well, and I His name is Devon Keys. I looked at the trailer on, <laughs> on Facebook and I looked at the comments, and the top comment that had lots of ups and hearts was uh, a person saying, This is really great for the mentally ill people. <laughs> like empowering mentally ill people. I'm like, you're not empowering. You're you're actually talking about Were they being down. sarcastic? 
like they can't be. You thought that they actually I, were I, saying that I this can't is imagine good for that, mentally ill. Yeah, I can't imagine fifty people who are saying yes are the same people that would read that deep into a comment like that. Okay, I think there's probably some obviously that's, that are, but that's terrible. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, like when, like we all laughed at the the idea of like a a theater shooting at this this movie because we're like, okay, first of all, oh. the first, the, the other one had nothing to do with the Joker. Okay. It was just because it was a shooting that just happened to be at a theater with the big people. The other thing is that the Joker doesn't represent to that kind of thing. And then I watched this movie and I was like, this, this glorifies this violence. Does. Yeah. <laughs> it, do, it does kind of line up with that yeah. mentality. Right. And like, uh, honestly, the, the Aurora shooter. Yeah says the same kind of things that yeah. the jokers yeah says. well yeah. i think what's what's interesting about that is the it's it's a take on like how can somebody what can happen to somebody to get them to that point to start making those decisions right to start making the well, decisions this movie do didn't that. do that to me for I, me though i know yeah. this movie was so sloppy with the theme that yeah. i felt like but but that's a really interesting thing uh, if if you guys have ever seen polytechnique film uh, the first feature film, I believe, by Denis Villeneuve, um, is about a school shooter. and From their POV. Their POV, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting. It's really, really, really dark and heavy, but it's... Well, if there's anything that's refreshing about... The, well, there's a lot of things refreshing about the Joker, but the... Um, I, I like that we're... It, it did an exercise in exploring the mentality that leads to that kind of mass shooter type personality yeah. without being another mass shooter movie. Like we've seen, like I feel like that's become like overdone to where now it's a trope that's not interesting in films anymore. Is what? B b have a scene where we're at a school and then all of a sudden out the window you see a guy in a black trench coat and then the rest is a paint by numbers scene. You is that like a trope? <laughs> yeah, it's in a lot of media. Yeah. I... I I don't think I've ever seen it. I feel it. like I've seen it a dozen times in the last two years. Oh. You know, it's just a common, it's just, it's just a really easy go-to to harp on Americans' fears right now. Uh, sure, yeah, know? sure. Um, I'm glad we didn't have a scene with the Joker carrying an assault rifle into a crowd. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, he was very vengeful. I mean, this whole thing was based on revenge. It wasn't... That was also the weird thing about this, his social awareness. Was it wasn't based on revenge until the end, really. No, but I mean, he the he so wanted like, he, he just wanted validation that he existed. That's what all this. Like, every death that he carried out was on purpose. Is what I mean. Except for the self, like this, even the self defense stuff was. Yeah. Like he was very. He made the decision to kill the people that he did. It yeah. wasn't on accident at all. That's true. So that's what I mean by revenge driven. Um. Pizza time? Oh God! <laughs> That's a weird. This is a you weird. You want to bring? You want to bring pizza into this? Kind of. Ooh. Oh man. Oh man. Can I start? Yes, please. Sure. This movie is a uh, spicy, uh, a fresh pepperoni pizza that's spicy. That's it. <laughs> nice. Sure. <laughs> Sure. Sounds good. It was. It was delicious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> what, what, what kind of pizza was this? Oh, dude, it's so complex. It's very All right. Uh, okay. So it's uh, it's got the right base, the crust, the sauce, the cheese dialed in. But it has, you know, like every topping imaginable for your pizza and some there's too much of and some there's not enough of so it's kind of frustrating you're like yeah it's a i mean it's good it's interesting but uh <laughs> like there's too much you know spicy sausage on here i could have could have done with a little bit more uh <laughs> olives <laughs> that's what it is all right <laughs> on a menu what would that pizza be called um it would be called uh the block party <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this is a pizza. Um, it's regular crust sauce, and then just a ton of red onions. Mm. Just red onions, <laughs> like one big thick layer of red onion. Are they sliced? Yeah. Are they cooked? 
Uh, no. With the pizza? No, no, no. They're raw onions that put Oof. on afterwards. After? Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't so, eat, so wouldn't you, eat that. So you're like cutting the pizza up and everyone's <laughs> you're, going, you're crying. I'm like, this is so interesting. I'm like, yeah. And you're like, this is kind of it's kind of gross. I don't know if I want it. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> On a like, menu, what would that pizza be called? Uh, the Joker pizza. No. Oh, wow. it'd be, it'd oh, the, hey. the Stinko. I wanted the, the Stinko. Stinko. I wanted to say oh, that I right. actually really dug the origin of the name in this movie. Oh, yeah. I did, too. I yeah. loved that. just want to put that out there. Because we often hot harp about origin oh, names. Yeah. And how cheesy and stupid they Solo. are. Solo. So you're alone. You're <laughs> Solo. <laughs> Solo. How about Han Loser? <laughs> <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> and then he just... That'd be hilarious if he's just like... A solo? <laughs> okay. That would have been better. That would have been better. Uh, I have to... Go eat some pizza? Yeah. All right. So let's uh, conclude our spoiler-filled show here. Yep. Well, thanks for watching the talkies. Bye. Bye. Bye.